Hi, I'm here with jazz saxophonist Russell Vandenberg. Hi, Russell. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Russell, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started playing the saxophone? Well, I started playing the saxophone when I was about 14. Not too long before that, I, I started actually on clarinet and I was absolutely obsessed with it and it kept me off the streets. So it, it focused my energy into an instrument by, by playing the clarinet and I, I just realised at that age that, you know, when I put my mind to something, I, I'm quite obsessive about it, to be honest. Uh, and then I had this teacher called Harry College. He was my first ever teacher. And he was a jazz enthusiast, and one day he brought his alto in, and he started giving me some Charlie Parker transcriptions. And I was like, well, I don't really know much about Charlie Parker, because at the time, because I was, you know, I was in the, into the clarinet, my first sort of hero in jazz was Benny Goodman. And then, you know, I got massively into swing in the 1930s music. I was listening to all sorts of players from that era. Didn't really understand bebop until this teacher sort of explained it to me and he phrased it. Once you hear it being phrased right on an alto and it's stuck right next to you, it opened my ears up and I wanted to play like that. I wanted to phrase like that. So I got my grades, my grade eight on clarinet or something in a very short space of time. And then I, I just swapped over to the, the alto. I, I borrowed an alto from the school where I was at and then the rest is history. And, from then on, we, you know, went to college at the age of 17, Leeds College of Music. And so what was so, your time at music college like? It was interesting, you know, like I said, I was 17, you know, you're not a man when you're that age. You're still, I was still a kid, you know, I was still a kid when I was in my 20s, to be honest. I was sort of finding my way, but I was very serious. <laughs> I was very serious when I was in college. I used to do a hell of a lot of practice. I kind of wrote off the lessons. You wouldn't um, go to the lessons just to practice? Well, yeah. It's weird because I was a year younger than everybody else. And I had a battle on my hands to try and get into college because I went straight out of high school, took a year and a half out, didn't do my A-levels, and then went into music college. And I passed the audition and everything like that, but I still had a battle on my hands to stay on that course and to prove my worth. So... Not because of that, because of my own intrigue and interest in, in, you know, the whole art form of jazz music and everything like that. I was very passionate about it and I, I practiced an awful lot. And at the end of the three years, I came out with a distinction. I think I got the highest mark in, in, in my year. And then at the same time, in my third year, I auditioned for the, um, the Guild Tools postgrad course. At that time, when people auditioned for the Guildhall course, that was the, the main course everybody wanted to do in London. It wasn't Trinity, or it wasn't necessarily Academy, it was the Guildhall postgrad course. And what happened at the time is, is there was this trend that people didn't always get in the first year, and they had to reapply the second year with more of a chance to get in then. And to my surprise, I got in the first year, and then doing the, that course, that one-year course in the Guildhall was a stepping stone for me in London, and things were happening without even me realising. It's as if I was sort of like attracting these circumstances to happen to me. Um, for instance, we did a recording with the Gildor Big Band one morning just before Christmas and we broke up for Christmas and we came back in January. I remember somebody coming up to me and saying, hey, congratulations. And I was like, yeah, congratulations, Happy New Year. And then they're like, no, 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 that Big Band recording we did, Dot Stroman, course director at the time, he put it forward for a competition and he just come out with um, the Soloist Awards. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, fuck. Yeah, I didn't realise. And, and that year I got to meet Kenny Wheeler and play with him as well. And he took a liking to me. And um, after I left the Guild Tour, he booked me on, on various occasions as a quintet or, or a septet. Did the Vortex with him and various other, other projects. And that was an amazing experience as well. Also during that year, I was already very good friends and very heavily with Tim Garland. And I was, he was my teacher as well, on and off road over the years. And, and he also handed me the baton, so to speak, for a teaching position at the Wavendon Jazz Course. I was also very good friends with Jeff Klein, who took me under his wing at the time as well, and remained to do so also, uh, you know, throughout the years. When I was about 21, when I left the Guild Hall, I got the Wavendon gig, you know, teaching gig, and then it sort of things just developed from there onwards, really. Wow. What would you say was your most pinnacle time so far in your career? In my career, working at Trinity College of Music. I did that for eight years, mm -hmm. um, starting in 2000. 
And I resigned in a couple of years ago, yeah, 2008. And that for me, I think was the pinnacle because I've always been very passionate about talking about music and talking about this art form that I love. Not just jazz, but music, all right? Me good music. And during that time, I, you know, I just grew such a huge passion towards the, uh, understanding the students and understanding where students' minds are at and making my own personal discoveries of, of music easy for them to understand, not for them to necessarily replicate what worked for me, but to also kind of make sense of what could be confusing the student at that moment in time and to help the student find their own path and to find what works for them. And I think that's why I resigned as well. well that is why I resigned, because it got to the point where I was no longer allowed to let the student find out what worked for themselves. They had to tick boxes. Mm. I think that's the downfall of education, really. So they, they ended up having to sort of tick boxes in order to pass exams or get a, gig, a good grade for their, for their degree by working on something that doesn't feel right for them. Yeah. And that's, at that point, I started questioning whether I could actually pass this exam and get this degree, a good mark in this degree, whereas at the same time, I was working with incredible people, you know, in, in, in London and in, in London. At that point, I had to sort of leave. But I think my period there was incredible for me, really. And I grew a great, great passion in, in that. And that was fantastic. Where are you actually from? What's your, what's your origins? I was born in Hatfield. When I was six, I moved over to Holland, and I was brought up to read and write Dutch up until the age of something like, I don't know how old I was, 12 or something, and then moved back to England. Do you have any other family members who are musical? Yeah, I mean, my, my dad was a musician. He, he was on the stage at the age of, of three and a half, actually. My dad was born in 1937, just, just before 1940, the war broke out. So... His dad, my granddad, was a very respected musician in Holland at the time. He was a songwriter and he was a performer. He was an accordionist. He, he was, um, at that time in the 1930s, he was respected as one of the most outstanding technical accordionists around. You know, they, they entered the war being a cabaret act and with my, my dad being on the stage at that age as well, playing accordion and dancing and singing. Um, together with my granddad and also my dad's sister, my auntie. So they were a trio, an act, and that's what got them through the war. So one night they were playing in front of the British troops, next night they were playing in front of the, the French and the Canadians and the Americans and then the Germans. They were playing in front of all sorts of you know troops and, and different crowds in cabaret bars and it was the real cabaret thing. And it got them through the war. And, and luckily they survived. They got themselves into some incredible tricky circumstances sometimes in order to escape the Nazis and and the German occupation. That was um, that was pretty much everywhere at the time. But yeah, they they survived it. And and so that's that's where that's where it all sort of stems from, really. And my dad was a huge jazz enthusiast and always has been. Wow. So I know you have an album out that you need. Can you just make one? We did, yeah. A group that I've got called Centerline. Yeah, we've put an album out. It's the second one. It's it's coming out soon. It's been we've recorded it several months ago. It's been mixed and mastered, and it'll be coming out shortly, very shortly. It's called Counterculture. It's a quartet with myself, Darren Altman on drums, who also co-leads the group. Um, guitarist Jess Franks, and electric bass player John Harvey. Um, I'm playing tenor and ewe on it. Yeah, it's on new material that I've mostly written for it. Um, there's a piece on there by Jez, um, Darren's written a piece, and John's written a piece as well. Yeah, it's coming out soon. Excellent. So if anybody wants to check this out, where can they go buy it? At the moment, quite difficult to say. <laughs> but <laughs> if you monitor any Facebook activity or MySpace, you know, keep an eye on, on my website, which is russellvanenberg.co.uk or .com, then news updates will be followed. And, um, yeah, I hope to see you at a gig nearby soon. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely be there. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah, thanks very much.